Hey, what's up YouTube? So today it's that time of year. We've got to get to this pile of wood. I already got next year or this coming year firewood ready to go, but I want to get firewood ready for next winter. So that way this can start to dry now. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the steels out. I got the little one, probably not even going to use that one. So mostly today we're going to focus on the uh, little 271. And I'm just going to go through what I do uh, the way I use firewood and the way I go through it, not that I know everything, but maybe you might pick up a thing or two that you might do a little differently than the way you do it. And if you have no idea what you're doing, well, this will be something that'll help you guide you along through the beginnings of the basics. So get you a kit, you know, some earmuffs, shield, helmet, you know, especially depending on what you're going to do, but you definitely want water. Get you a little canopy, some shade. Get you some help, right bud? And uh, we're gonna get after it, but you can make it very complicated and cut it however you want. I'm gonna say bucking it up because that's the terms. So we're gonna buck these logs up, get them ready to split. Um, I just use the bar to measure. I just kind of eyeball with the bar as I go along. I used to tape it off, spray it. I used to use a block. I'd paint a block a certain color you know, that 18 inch block, spray a mark, use your blade, however you want to mark it. But you know, you're going to want to make sure that you get it the size that you need. I can fit up to like a two foot, so a 24 inch log in my stove. So it doesn't really matter on my lengths, but I want to have manageable pieces. So I'm going to take these saws, well this saw in 271 and take it apart, do a little bit of maintenance and uh, get the gas and oil in it and then we'll start bucking them up all right now we're inside just because there's a lot of road noise a lot of vehicles running around today but uh i put this tool away that's for the saw someplace that i would remember and wouldn't you know it i can't remember so anyway i found a 19 so it's a 19 is going to get her done today but we're just basically going to take this off just because we want to look and see how nasty it is because we've already got it out done a couple jobs this year with it so far so we want to make sure that you know we don't burn up the chain and the saw and the clutch and things because we're not taking it properly care of it and we'll get these two off and then i recommend keep your cover on there just to be safe you know and now uh, we can uh, loosen this flathead a little bit here that's your tensioner. Maybe it's tightened. There we go. And then uh, don't, don't flip it over and uh, accidentally put it on bass backwards. So, see all this caked in there? Look at all that. And your oil comes out through here. So she would have been oiling okay. But, uh, you know, we want to make sure to clean this all up so I'm just going to take a just any kind of brush usually an old paint brush works pretty good oh no I don't got one here I'll be right back now we're going to take clean this up once we you know make a mess cleaning it all off and some people, some people be like I ain't got time to do that well then maybe you got more money than I do but I ain't got time to keep going and buying new saws and having problems and you know, so just clean this stuff up. You know, I'm going to dump this all here in the trash instead of on the bench. But basically just go through and just clean this up. It's not that hard before you do the job. And normally what I would do is sharpen this chain already. But I'm not going to sharpen the chain because I want to show you the difference in when your chain is sharp, when it's eaten good, and when it's not. So... Uh, again, I'm not an expert on sharpening any chains or any of this stuff. I've just done it pretty much my whole life. So I've been running saws and doing this for at least 30 years. And this is just some of the ways that I have done things. So now the last thing I'm going to do is dump this in the trash and then blow this all off with air outside so I don't get it all over in here. And we will be back. Now, I already got the saw cleaned up. Um... I'm gonna have them stop for just a second so I don't have to edit all this, but we're just gonna blow it off real quick. Go ahead. Looks pretty good. So it doesn't have to be perfect unless you're really that crazy, but as long as you know you don't have a bunch of stuff everywhere. So, all right, let's get this back together.
Man, I had a sneeze there. Whew. All right, now we still don't want to forget about our bar. I recommend wear gloves if you're going to handle this at all. But see, we got a bunch of stuff around in here. And then this hole, that's where your oil goes in. If that's plugged, what do you think is going to happen to your bar and chain without oil? Hmm. So make sure you... Oh, huh. I wonder what's in that hole. I wonder if it was getting oil on that side. So we're going to take the air. Wow, look. You think oil might flow through there now? You know, most guys would be half tempted to just go run your saws without even doing that. But man, that was packed in there. That's not, that's not going to just clear itself. So that's why it's good to do preventative maintenance. So we're going to slap this baby on. Again, remember to wear gloves. Fun song and dance of lining it up. You can see my pin, so I just need to adjust, use this adjuster. Loosen her up. Oh, going the wrong way. No, I was going the right way. I can't make up my own mind today. That's what I thought. There we go. Now see, this has got to make you got to make sure that's on the sprocket right. You'll feel it when it goes flat. Okay. So now this is super loose. That's why that chain looks like that. So we're going to tighten it just a wee bit. Or my chains. Oh, caught there. There we go. That's what our problem was. We didn't need to loosen that much. Our chain was caught. So we got to make sure it's in the track of the bar. Like so. And we'll go a little bit more. So when you assemble it, you don't want anything to come apart while you're trying to hold this and get your cover on and do all that. Now let's toss these on there. And there's a million different ways of doing this. A lot of people would say, obviously don't ever touch this with your bare hands and they are correct. You see how that, that's about where I like it. As it warms up, it's gonna get even looser. But if you get it any tighter than that, it's, it causes a lot of binding. So you don't want it to be so loose it's out like this, but we'll probably actually run that. Turn off the brake. Don't do this, seriously, this is not smart to do. I'm just trying to show you, you know, that now I can see it's too loose, right? So let's tighten it up a little bit more. Ooh, just a hair. That's actually probably good. Some guys might say that's too loose, and I almost agree. I'll go a little more. It's not too bad. See how it spins nice and free? And we're gonna tighten these babies up. Check it one more time. Sometimes when you tighten it, it, it changes how that is. That's nice. So, our teeth are pointed the right way. So we know the chain's on the right way. We'll put our brake back on. We'll fill her with some gas and oil. Actually, yeah, I just did the air cleaner. We'll come back to the air cleaner another time if anybody wants to know any more about it, but it's all pretty much the same. But usually you blow out the air cleaner also. You know what, let's just do it. Why not? Only takes a minute. If you're gonna do preventative maintenance, you might as well do preventative maintenance. 
we'll loosen up these top couple screws. I think you gotta have the choke on or some little fancy trick to pop it off the rest of the way here in a second, but we'll figure it out. I haven't done it in a little bit. Loosen that all the way. Loosen this one all the way. Be nice to have that Twix, whatever. Look at that air cleaner. I think this one twists. Oh, I'm just coming out. But um, I'm actually going to do what's probably not preferred. But I'm going to blow from you know blow it out. It's not preferred usually just to replace it's the best. But I'm going to blow from the inside out so that way I'm not blowing material. And damaging it but if you do this too hard you'll just blow the elements out and now your air filter is no good so be very careful when you try to blow out any dirt now I blew that out real gently I blew out all this around here you want to change your plug once in a while and as far as gas and oil that's up to you I use steel because that's I mean that's who makes it why not use what they recommend to put in there but this is possibly controversial. I don't know, but I prefer to run um, straight gasoline. So I like to use what's known as rec fuel in these parts we call. So, um, so actually make sure you lock it. Okay, so she's locked, ready, tidy, locked. But rec fuel really helps it from gelling up because that uh, ethanol will, you know, gel up over time. So if you if it's expensive or you can't get it or whatever then i would put it in just in the fall so while it's sitting it won't gel up because i'll run gasoline you know all summer while i'm using it but come winter i'll run a tank you know the last tank i try to always run some at least some wreck fuel in it now we got our cover about tightened down we're going to take it outside to start it, but in order to start it, in case you don't know, we're going to put gas and oil in it. But first, you got to push the safety down full sauce in order to engage your choke. We'll give it a pull. If it fires, we'll come up to the uh, half choke. And then once it seems to keep going, then we'll get it back on just ignition. So I'll show you a little bit more of that in here in just a second. Now to the point, the fun point. Make sure you got some steel toes. That's what we called them back in the day. You can call them carbon toes or composite or whatever fancy term y'all want to use today. I always like to uh, tie up my boots real good. You'll get sawdust in there. I like to pull my boots, my laces, or uh, socks over my boots like so over the laces. That way they won't get you know, sa uh, sawdust in there. And, um, you know, you want to have long sleeve, whatever, but make sure you don't have a bunch of baggy clothes. Now, we're going to get to cutting this one. I recommend be aware of what you got going on because uh, you don't want to be trying to work here and trip over this log, you know. So, you don't want don't to have that there. So, just having it there for an example of what you don't want to do. Wherever you're going to cut, I recommend have it propped up pretty good. Make sure it's not really going to roll. And be aware if you're pulling from a pile, you know, it's going to want to come down. So without further ado, you should probably have chaps on and other safety gear. But, you know, we don't, we don't need to worry about that. So a full choke, break on. I stopped the saw because I want to show you or tell you what I'm trying to show you. I'm going to cut this up and as you'll see while I cut it, you know, it'll cut probably slow if it's really dull, but we're looking at the sawdust, you know, this is what's going to tell us whether we need to sharpen our chain or not. So here we go.
pretty small little pieces. Okay, so that's going to take us forever trying to cut all this wood. So instead of being here forever, using, using more fuel than needed, more R's than needed, we're going to go and sharpen this chain real quick. So we'll be back. So let's get her apart. Careful your muffler because obviously that baby's going to be hot now. You don't need the bar, and it doesn't matter if you flip it one way or the other now either. Whoop! Also in the earlier video, I forgot to mention about blowing that hole out and putting a little bit of oil in there now and again too, if you can. Uh, there's probably a special oil, but you know, bar and chain oil works for you know the bar and the chain and pretty much everything else. Now onto this part. We want to find a link to start. Sometimes I will just paint one so. And save time, I probably will just paint ones. Get a paint marker here. And color here today is red. So we'll just mark a spot where we know where we're starting. Now this is just a Harbor Freight Cheapo. Um, it's nothing special, but I prefer these because I used to do it by hand. It takes forever. Trying to match the angles, keep everything the same is pretty difficult. It's pretty simple. People make things way more difficult than needed. I don't know why. So what we're going to do, you know, people will try to figure out what angle and whatever and everything. And I use the tooth to tell me what the angle I need to use. So as you come down this lighting, it's going to be terrible if we have the light. As you come down with this, you're going to see the angle. I'm going to have to set this saw up differently so I can get a better angle. But you'll be able to look down in here and match this angle of the tooth. The angle of this to the angle of this to the angle of that tooth. And right now, I'm too far this way, so I need to bring that back now if you see that tooth the angle of that tooth right there there we go that is almost spot on there we go so that's matching the angle of that tooth right right there the same angle let me change it a little bit can you see how now that's going to just hit this corner so we want to get the same angle as that tooth. What degree is that? I don't know. It says 30. I'm pretty sure that's not what it's supposed to be. Um, but anyway, that is the angle that is there. And this chain's not that old. So I'm just going to go through and zip one tooth and then move along. You don't want this one. You want to get every other cutting tooth. Okay. Um, so our angle, I want to get a little bit more than that. That looks pretty good right there. So now we're right to our starting point. So I'm actually going to do the other tooth angle and do that one real quick. So now we'll match it up on this side. So we'll do all of these ones first now, I guess, since that's where our mark is. So we're just going to match that again. And you got your brake, so make sure you hold your brake. Check your angle, and I think I need to feed it in some. Let go of the brake so it can move. That looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is turn it on, hold the brake, come down, zip, go to the next tooth, and so on. So here we go. Make sure you wear your safety glasses and all that good stuff. Now it's catching here. I need to bring the whole thing out. It would be a lot easier if I did, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna fight it. Actually, I'm gonna fix it. Now you can see that tooth where we just cut. It's got a little hot on that tip of that corner, and I hung out there a little too long, just kind of as a, a 
visual to show, but you can really see that as a nice angle all the way across the whole tooth. You know, it's not too much on one side, and it's also down kind of in the bottom there, which is what you want. You want to make sure you come down in that tooth also because it cuts on the side and the top of that or bottom, depending on how you look at it, but it cuts there as well. Now, we also are going to have a burr left over on this edge of the tooth where we just cut. So if you really want a sharp chain, I'd come through with a file and knock that off. You also want your anti-kickback. You got to take these down a little bit, which we might do take some of that down as well. But you, you know, if you want a really sharp chain, you got to take that burr there off. So what we're going to do is just keep on going here. We'll get her back in here. I also moved the sharpener out now. So this is where we left off. We'll move the stop to that tooth. And here we go again. Hold the brake. Quick little zip. Go on to the next. Quick little zip. Try to use the same technique, the same amount of time, the same pressure, the same everything. Narrow, narrow, right? Same. That was a little fast. There we go. Binding up a little bit here. Come on. That's it. Now, switch to the other side. Shut her off. And then eyeball it again. You're going to have to move so I can see there, bud. Shoot, look at that. That's actually, a, I already put it right to it. It's really hard to get light in there for you folks. I'm sorry. But anyway, maybe a little. I mean, it is crucial to get it exactly the same. So that's pretty much parallel with the tooth. Oh, well, here we go. Let's do this side now. No, I don't really like that angle, so I'm gonna turn it just a touch. Let's go back. I'll show you why I don't like it. Okay, come over by the light here. See that inside corner, how it's dark? It could be that that tooth was just damaged. But either way, that didn't get cut on this very inside crucial little corner. So we want to make sure we see nice, shiny silver like that. But uh, so we need to change the angle to where we don't see that. So let's set it back up. So what's happening is I don't have it this way enough. And that's probably all I needed to do, that tiny little touch. There we go. So if you look in here, see that tooth now? Beautiful. So we'll send that. And I didn't do no fancy calculations and no mathematical equations and, you know, you just use your eye. It's not rocket science, folks. You can 
you can get a nice sharp chain too so if you think you have to go and pay for having this done to get a sharp chain just do it yourself and take your time so I'm gonna start zipping through here here we go double check my tooth yep still like it here we go Now you want to do the same over here too, because obviously you're removing the same amount of material on both sides. I've had this a long, you know, probably at least four years, three, four years at least. And I ain't even changed the wheel. And uh, I've cut a lot of teeth with this thing so it's kind of getting caught a little bit worn out now this time I'm gonna start from my mark uh, we're just going to try to knock this burr off right here on all these teeth because it, it took metal off on the other side which peels it around. So all we're doing is just trying to kind of peeling it back. You're not really trying to put an angle on it. You're just trying to get that burr off of it. All right, now we got one more little tool here. We want to get, this might not even be the right one. That's all I got right now. Um, so you want to take these little anti-kickback. This keeps the saw from kicking back on you, but it also sets the depth and how far this lets that tooth go into the wood. So if you take too much of this off, that tooth is really going to eat. So we don't want to go too crazy. I'm going to start just before here. And you can see I've took a lot of material off, so this is probably not very accurate either way anymore. But you want to go butterfingers today. One by one, not cl too close to this edge. You want it to stay flat. These are pretty good, actually. I think I'm just gonna send it, but uh, they're not really, they're not really grabbing at all. So, you know, I could probably take a little bit off. I'll just go through it real quick. Now we're going to finish up these last couple rakes. Got to thinking of, as I was doing them, another term people use is they call these the rake. I do believe. So we're going to, hey, okay. So we're going to take down these rakes. And that was the one we, hi, Kay. Hey, Kay. What are you doing? Meow. Hey, Ripley. Meow. Now we're going to get some, uh, this is probably controversial, but something I like to do, but I like to take a little bit of two cycle gas and, um, two cycle gas and oil, you know, and we're going to soak this baby real quick and, uh, then we're going to shake it off, let it dry off. I usually will save that two cycle for something later and um, you know just throw it on the fire or something but either way you get all this crud inside this chain 
So we'll get a lot more life and it'll function a lot better if we get that stuff out. So we'll soak this and we'll be back. Now if you're going to soak it, you know, you probably want to use more gas than my cheap as, but, uh, you know, I just get enough in there where I can got the garage doors open. You obviously want to make sure it's well ventilated if you're going to use gas. Gas is not smart, it's not safe doing this, but as long as you're in a well ventilated area, you know, you'll be fine. And if you do, just do it outside. I'm going to spin this chain around a little bit. I'm just getting it real rough. I'm not trying to get it perfect because anything's better than what it was, right? So I'm just trying to clean it up a bit. Some people will go, man, that is going to be so knotted up. You're going to have fun untangling that. Yep, probably. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Gonna let her drip dry in a little bit and blow it off. Be back. Now we're gonna dispose of our gas, so we might as well do a how to start a fire safely if you use gasoline. So we're gonna put it on the end of the stick. Now we're just gonna hold the stick back, light the stick, throw the stick in the fire. Go back up, poop. Like, like back out of the fire, don't you know? There we go. Now it cleaned up pretty good, and it is moving around pretty good as well. One thing, wow, look at magic. Sometimes it's hard to get these apart. Now you're getting a lot of side flex. See how I can bend it? So it's like a motorcycle chain. Right, you or a bike chain. When you get a lot of play side to side like that, those links are starting to get pretty worn. So this chain is a little bit more old and worn out than I was uh, remembering, I guess. So now we're gonna clean this last little bit of dust off of here. Look at our oil. See how it's coming right out? No problem. That's what you want to see. And we're gonna clean this baby up. Put her back together and go cut some wood. Cut. Now we uh, got all the goop off of it, got all the gas off of it, and blew it off with air. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of motor oil. Again, this is not necessary. This is an older chain, so I'm trying to get every little bit of life out of it while we can. So That's going to make a mess when I first fire up the saw, but I'm not worried about it. I would rather have it oiled up and dry. So now I'm going to wipe down the bar, blow out the bar, put a little bit of oil, just squirt a little bit of oil in the end of it there because it's still a nice bar. And I'll have to, I guess, watch the video to see which way I had the bar on last. I don't remember. So I think I want it on upside down. I think I had it right side up. That way when you wear down the bar, you know, you wear this side and then you wear this side because you put the pressure on the bottom. Right, so that's where you're going to start wearing on the bar. So you want to flip it over and wear it out evenly. Okay, so well, we're going to blast this with some air, put some oil in there, and we'll get her assembled. So I'm just going to put a little drop in there. Move it through. I already put some in there. Now we're going to untangle this chain, get it back together here. So I had it on, looks like right side up. All right, make sure we get the tooth the right way. But you go by the bottom, right? So we're cutting edges coming towards the saw. Oh, oily, this is fun. But man, this is really going to cut nice. I'm going to probably even lubricate as it cuts. <laughs> All right, 
Put you right back on our pin. Chains all the way down. We don't want to tighten it just tight, tight just yet. We want to remove our brake. And she's still tight just where she was set. It's perfect. Okay, so now we're going to snug these back up. Put our brake back on. Get the uh, oil cleaned off my hands, and then we'll go start cutting some wood. All right, here we go again. Full choke. Now, it's not quite as fine, and it's definitely not like wood chips, but that's that tooth there definitely is cutting really good. So, you know, it didn't really take me that long to make that kind of a difference in my cut. And this is red oak, so this is really hard wood. So, be able, so to be able to cut through it like that, that fast, you know, that horsepower is... Uh, helpful too so but anyway we're gonna start you know we're gonna finish cutting up some wood here so we're gonna split it next so we'll probably do a video on splitting but uh if you want to see any of that come on back all right thanks for watching <laughs>